Hi everyone, Andrew here. I've had a few requests to explain how to set up multiple Laravel applications using Docker locally, so that's what this video is going to be about. I actually use the following techniques on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's worked out pretty well for me over the course of the last year. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is set up two different directories, app1 and app2, which will hold our Laravel applications. As far as the Docker setup goes, I'm going to take a little shortcut here and use the Docker Compose Laravel repo that I've mentioned in a few of my other videos. I've linked it down below. In the app1 directory, I'm just going to clone that repository, delete the git information since we're not going to be using that, and then install a brand new Laravel app into the source directory. Okay, once that's finished up, we can spin up our container network by using the docker compose up command with the d and build flags. Going into our browser, we can see our Laravel application at localhost 8080. Let's work on our second app. We'll do the exact same steps in the app2 directory. Clone the docker compose Laravel repo. Delete the git information. And create a new Laravel app in the source directory. Now you might be asking why we're not just using a single Docker Compose file for both applications and just creating twice as many services to accommodate it. Well, you definitely can do that as long as you give the services unique names. However, when working with Docker or any type of containerization service in general, the rule of thumb is that you want to have each app separated into an environment all its own. It makes it easier to control, understand, and organize if the networks are all packaged with their accompanying applications. Okay, let's try bringing up that second Laravel app while our first one is still active. We get an error. Now, here's where things get a little tricky. Docker can't create the service containers requested because their names are already in use by our first container network. That's not a big deal though. All we have to do is rename them so that they're unique throughout both applications. Let's bring down the app1 docker container network. And actually, I'm also going to split up my command prompt windows here so we can access both app1's project root and app2's. Side note, if you do development on a Mac and haven't checked out iTerm yet, it's a fantastic replacement for the default console and I highly suggest giving it a spin. I'm not affiliated with them, I just really like iTerm. Okay, now that there's no containers running, let's open up both our projects docker compose yml files. In each of them, we'll give our service containers more unique names. For app1, I'm going to prefix all of them with underscore 1. And for app2, I'll use underscore 2. After those are saved, we can try and bring up our Docker container networks again. Our app1 containers spin up fine, so let's move on to app2. Okay, we're seeing a different error this time. This is because the ports that we're exposing to our local machine on the Nginx, PHP, and MySQL services are all the same. Let's go back into the docker compose file for the second app and make some adjustments to those values. For the Nginx service, we'll just increase the port by 1 and expose the service on port 8081. For MySQL, we'll use 33061, and for PHP, we'll use 9001. Save these changes, and we'll try and bring up our app2 container network yet again. Okay, it looks like everything went through fine that time. 
Heading over to our browser, we can see our app one application is running fine in localhost 8080. And if we replace the port with 8081, we'll see our app two application. The last thing that we need to tie in is our MySQL database access. If we head over to our first apps.env file, all we need to do is change out the DB host to MySQL and adjust the database name, username, and password to match what we've used in our project's Docker Compose file. The reason that we use MySQL as the host name instead of localhost is that when the containers are spun up, a virtual network is created alongside the services that we specified in our project's Docker Compose file. Each of those services can access one another using the service name specified, instead of having to rely on remembering an internal IP address. Because each project and each project's container network is isolated from the other, we can use the same host name for both Laravel apps, and they will point to their corresponding individual MySQL databases. Okay, now that we have that done, we can test this out by running an artisan migrate command. The databases were created successfully for the first app, and were also created successfully for the second app. Now, you can stop here if you'd like. This is basically all you need to know to have two Laravel apps up and running locally with Docker at the same time. You could even spin up more, as long as you give the containers unique names. But, what if you wanted one application to talk to another through the Docker network? What if you had one Laravel app acting as an API, while the other one fetched information from it? It's a common problem, and one I'm going to show you how to solve with just a little bit of work. Our first app we're going to use as a receiver. It will make a call to our second app on some path, and return a block of data back. Let's create a test route for this called users, and it will invoke a user controller and a method called get remote users. Actually, let's rename that path to remote users and keep with the method. Using the artisan command to create that controller, I'll open it up and add in our get remote users method. Just to make sure this is working properly, we'll just have it return a string for now. Okay, we can see that going to localhost 8080 remote users works as expected. What we actually want to have happen though, is that we fire off a call to the Laravel app at 8081 and return back the result of that call as JSON. Since our method is called remote users, we'll get back all of the users on the second app. I can use artisan tinker here and just create three dummy user objects on our second app, storing them in the database. On our second app's routes web file, we can define a user's route that will return all of the user models attached to the app. If we save and open up a new tab in our browser, pointing to localhost 8081 users, we can see the JSON returned containing the users that we just added in. All right, now it's time to make that call over to our second app from our first app. We could use a library like Guzzle, but Laravel 7 just introduced a brand new HTTP provider that's insanely easy to use. So I'll be demonstrating that here with this call. First, let's add in the use line for illuminate, support, facades, HTTP, and then all we have to do is call HTTP get and our URL. After that, we can return back the JSON to our user by calling the JSON method on the returned response object. A quick note though, this new HTTP library is a wrapper for Guzzle, and that needs to be installed into your application for this to work properly. I'll take care of that now.
Okay, let's try this out. Uh-oh, an error. Failed to connect to localhost port 8081. Now, you might be thinking, why is this kicking back an error? If I curl locally to that same address, I get back the data from my second app. Well, therein lies the issue. To your system, you have access to both the 8080 port, exposing the web server of the first app, and the 8081 port, exposing the second. However, each of those apps, when running inside of Docker, can only see the services and ports that are attached to those individual networks. It's why we have to use the MySQL host name instead of localhost when we set up the database credentials. So let's try using the service name. Our web server service on the second app is nginx underscore 2, but that still gives an error. Our first app's container network can't access the second app's container network, at least not without a slight modification to our Docker Compose setup. All right, first, let's bring down both container networks. In your second app's Docker Compose file, the application that will be providing data, we need to add a new network. Under our Laravel network, let's create one called App Shared, and under it, we'll set the driver property to Bridge. We'll then add this network to both our Nginx service and our PHP service, essentially creating a method of communication between both of our individual Docker Compose networks. Save this file and open up the Docker Compose file for your first application, the one that will be receiving data. We need to add a network to this one as well, but we need the exact name that Docker gives the previous bridge network that we just created on the second app. In order to get that, all we need to do is spin up our second app's Docker Compose network, and you'll see the name exposed at the beginning of the output sequence. This network will be added under our Laravel network, with the external property set to true. It's defining this network as outside of its own scope. Lastly, all we need to do is attach this network to the same services and bring up the Docker Compose network for the first app. If we go back to our localhost 8080 remote users URL and refresh, we can see the data from our second app. An API call is being made through the Docker Compose networks, retrieving data from the secondary app, and displaying it to our users on the first one. That's basically it for this video. You've learned how to configure and set up multiple Laravel applications locally using Docker and Docker Compose, and communicate between them using bridge networks. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me in the comments, or on my Twitter linked below. Also. A huge thanks to my Patreon subscribers and everybody else who continues to support these videos. Thanks for watching.